Well, hello and welcome to the program Illumination. We come from the library at Sunset Lodge 369 here in Santa Monica, California. As always, it's great to see you. My name is Les Jones. I serve as the senior deacon of Sunset Lodge. And behind the door, behind the board, is our producer and one of the people that's going to be a part of the show today, Brother Michael Wallback. As always, it's an honor to see you here, but we will also love to hear from you. The way to do that is uh, send us an email, and that is Sunset Masonic Lodge 369 at gmail.com. That's Sunset Masonic Lodge 369 uh, at gmail.com. And our web address, I just want to keep wanting to say that too. Our <laughs> web address is sunsetmasoniclodge.org. That's sunsetmasoniclodge.org. We are here most every Tuesday night. And we start eating at 6 o'clock. We want anybody. We're willing to share food with anybody. So if you're a Mason coming through, I'd love to see you. And if you're not a Mason, you just want to find out a little bit more, just sit down with us and have a bite to eat. Hey, come on by. We'd love to see you. Um, my guest today is somebody we've had on here before, just one of the regular brothers that adds so much to, to who and what we are, him and his wife, are very special friends of mine, and they're very special to me. It's Brother Ray Davis. Brother Ray, great to see you again, my friend. Great to be here, Brother Les. How are you doing, man? I'm groovy, man. I'm doing well. Oh, man. Oh, yes. It's, we're so honored to have you, man. I'm all. I'm honored to be here. You know, every time I just want to sit here and just talk to you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's wrap. Let's wrap. But let's talk about stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. So uh, I know uh, we really wanted to get into something that's little bit above me i think sometimes but i think as we get into this i'll get into it more and more you and brother michael really are into this a lot and i and that is uh freemasonry music and ritual mm -hmm. and that get, that's getting pretty deep isn't it yes it is yes it is it's it's interesting because i'm um i i get to perform the role of of organist yes. here in our lodge, as you know. And so it is my responsibility and pleasure to aid in our ritual work with the use of music. Yes. Uh, and uh, it has presented me with, uh, as, as a challenge, in essence. Because I'm, I'm, I'm a singer, songwriter. I, I get to play trumpet, sure. piano, guitar. Sure. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a composer, in essence. And... Um, it has not been easy always to know exactly what and where things should be musically. It's, it's, it's a lot like Freemasonry in general to me. In other words, there are certain parameters that make sense. You don't want to overstep. Um, but at the same time, what exactly does one play? I mean, I can't imagine uh, in the middle of our of what we do, just, uh, you know, playing some rock and roll necessary. Sure. Yeah. No, it doesn't fit. Doesn't, doesn't quite fit. Feels good. Except that time you played Deep in the Heart of Texas. I did me. do that. You know, that I? was nice. That, that <laughs> fell right into That was place. brother to brother. That's was. right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's interesting. I know I spent a little time in uh, junior high school and high school playing uh, an instrument. I played the tenor saxophone. Oh, yeah. And I loved it. It was a lot of fun. and But the depth of what music really is, when you break down music mm -hmm. and how it applies to the ritual of Freemasonry on top of that, there are a lot of parallels to it. And it just seems like the, the whole thing, and Brother Michael was bringing that up, and I'm going to give him a second. I don't want to just push it off on, but it just seems like there's such a parallel between musical notes and the ritual of Freemasonry. What do you think, Brother Michael? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, and we were talking less a, a little bit earlier that in the um, second degree in the staircase lecture, that music is placed 
above astro- uh, ge- geometry and just beneath astronomy. It was considered extremely important to Masons in terms of consciousness and enlightenment. And, and one of the things that the old rituals suggest, which we've sort of removed a little bit sadly from the, the newer abbreviated version of it, is its connection to mathematics. And, of mm-hmm. course, mathematics being a huge part of Freemasonry. We yes. talk about Pythagoras and the Pythagorean theorem and, and so forth. So maybe Ray can shed a little light on how music and math sort of somehow seem to connect to one another. Yeah, um, it, it's, it's a, a wonderful thing to bring up and, and to contemplate because, as we well know, number really describes everything. Number is everything. And m- music, if it's nothing else, it is the exp- is a physical manifestation of number. Every note is, in essence, a um, vibration right. that can be quantified. Right. Yeah. So, um, now, th- the thing that makes music music, though, is that we're not interested in every vibration. We're interested in vibrations that correspond or predictably don't. Does that, does that I, make sense? I tell you, what it sounds a lot like, I recently became a ham radio operator. Yeah. Over, in fact, I think I think this very day is my third year anniversary getting my first license. Hey, hey there you go. But it's it's like the frequencies mm-hmm. within ham radio, and breaking out the different frequencies to do whatever you want it to do. Yeah. It sounds a lot like that. It is the. There is a a, a language of these frequencies, of these resonances. Yes. There's a, a language that we employ to describe it. Uh, of course, you've heard musicians speak of, of notes, A, B, C, D, E, right. F, G. You know, in, in, in the West, we use just those, those, uh, those seven numbers, or letters, I should say. Right. Uh, but an A is not just an A. There, there are A's that sound up here, A's that sound down here, and A's in the middle. Right. But they are all predictable. That is to, to say, the, the vibration of a lower A and the vibration of a higher A are equal, except, except they're not. <laughs> except they're not. The, the easiest way to demonstrate it is, is by listening to it, is by hearing. But we're able to combine the, by using the letter names of, of, of the notes and by creating instruments that can predictably recreate those um, vibrations, those um, frequencies, I should say, predictably, we can we can construct music. We can take this language and combine it and extract and to suit our needs. So no matter what instrument you have playing it, you have a band playing, you have an orchestra playing, you can predict, let's say, playing the A note at this frequency. Yes. And it can be communicated to all the instruments. Yes. To do that note. Is yes. that what you're talking about? Yes, yes. So the predictability is important. It's, it's the reason why uh, when you uh, attend a, a, an orchestral concert right. or a concert band, right. really any kind of a group of musicians, sure. but an orchestra concert, the first thing you're going to hear when the orchestra takes the stage is them tuning up. Right. Because they, they all want to agree on what A means. Right. Yeah. On what this one little letter name for the notes. Small, yeah. narrow frequency. Exactly, exactly. So with that as a basis, the B makes sense, C makes sense, D makes sense, E makes sense, and, and, so, and so on and so forth. The skilled composer, therefore, r- recognizing a certain order that must be in place in music or to be understandable, yeah. uses the rules of that order to construct pieces that are appropriate for whatever the situation is. Now, I, I know that some people, especially uh, today, you know, the, the typical popular music fan, pop music fan, doesn't think of music in this way. No. Not, not, not at all. They don't necessarily even think of music as being ordered, but it is. It really is. It doesn't matter the style. Or when it was composed or when it was created. There is an order to it. There are things that it will do and things that it will not do. And those things have been decided by people. That's order. It ha- it, it, uh, um, this is a piece that begins at a certain time and ends at a certain time. Right. That is order. There are certain notes that are involved, certain tones that are involved, instruments that are involved. That is order. Regardless of how free a person might think they're being, no. they are still imposing order. 
Now, I got to tell you, I, I'm i showing my age here a little bit, but there's somebody who, if you get away from his commercial hits mm -hmm. and listen to rest of his albums, he is a genius when it comes to music like this. And that's Alice Cooper. I don't know if you've ever... <laughs> I don't know a lot of Alice. I, I know some. See, but... <laughs> people are used to his extravagant style and everything and and his his top hits. But if you listen to some deep cuts on his albums, the guy is a musical genius. And the way he is he writes stuff uh -huh. is even as a teenager, you know, his song I'm 18, I was 18 when that was out. So <laughs> but see, that's a, that's 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 his commercial stuff. Yeah, the yeah. other stuff is just absolute I, even then I knew it was brilliant really? music. Beyond anything that I could really put my finger on, I said, you know, that stuff is great. You're going to have to give me some cuts to check out. I'm going to have to. Yeah. I'm going to have to. We're going to see what it's about. But see, there's a what we're talking about, too, when you're talking about this with music, it seems like that's how it is in the ritual of Freemasonry yeah, also. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Yeah, actually, this is, this is exactly what I was uh, um And Brother Michael, yeah. I want you to pop in on this also. When considering what to play, right during each ritual, being being a composer, it it, it makes it a little bit easier for me. Right. And I'm and um, I have to give a little shout out to my mother, by the way. My mother, uh, her first name is Loretta. She goes by the last name of Hunter, Loretta Hunter. Loretta Hunter lives in Paris, California, P-E-R-R-I-S. And my mother is uh, eighty years old and the most brilliant musician I know. Really, man, she is a, a church musician. And uh, plays organ and piano, sings beautifully. Um, so much of what I do has been influenced by what I observed her doing before and the brilliant way that she supports services. So I saw her supporting uh, the church services that I grew up, you know, when I grew up attending church. Um, I watched what she did. I watched the spirit that she employed. I watched what, how she expressed her intention to be a support to the service and not be a star. Yes. And so I try to bring the same kind of thing to my work in the lodge. Uh, I want to play things that are supporting the ritual, which means sometimes playing little and sometimes playing much. There are places where, but but I can also feel where there are places where we need a bit of an uplift or we need a bit of a something to ease us down, to calm things down, speed things up, to slow things down. Music is able to communicate these things without words because the language it employs really in essence is something that's already a part of our bodies. Yeah. It's a part of our being. Far beyond the time when we spoke words. Far yeah. beyond that. Far sure. beyond that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, um, that... Um, that old Hebrew uh, um, manuscript called the Sefer Yetzirah, yes, or the the Book of Formation, yes, refers to the formation of the world being a pronouncement of of sound vibration. As I, a, I, I have yeah. heard that. I've heard that so much, and it's just it was created with sound vibration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, uh, let's take a moment to let everybody know, and I just stopped my stopwatch here, that let everybody know that uh, you are watching or listening to the program Illumination uh, from the library. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see our books back here. The library is Sunset Lodge 369 in Santa Monica, California. As always, it's great to have you here. My name is Les Jones. I serve as the the senior deacon here at Sunset Lodge, and Brother Michael uh, is behind the board and is also one of our co-hosts today. Our guest today is the wonderful, marvelous Brother Ray Davis. And if you want to reach us, please do send us an email. That's sunsetmasoniclodge369 at gmail.com. That's sunsetmasoniclodge369 at gmail.com or go right to our website, sunsetmasoniclodge.org, sunsetmasoniclodge.org. We would love to see if you want to come by. We're here most Tuesday nights, and we start at 6.30 with a meal, and at 7.30 we do whatever we're doing, whether it's degree, practice, or get-together of some type. If you're a Mason coming through the L.A. area, please do stop by. And if you're not a Mason, 
heck, we'll love to have you come by anyway. Right. Come by, have a bite to eat with That's us. Right. That's the type of people we are, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I if There's only been a few lodges I've been a part of, but I do not. I have not been to a Masonic meeting that has not had food involved. <laughs> so if you like to eat, come by, and you'll be a kindred spirit with our with our brethren here. That's right. Anyway, back to business here. Yeah. Uh, if I can just jump in for a second, guys. Yeah, a couple of things in, real quick. Um, first of all, you're talking near and dear to my heart when you talk about Alice Cooper. I've been obsessed with him for about a year now, and and played him to death on my Spotify. So it's it's usually walking back and forth to the lodge. It's about all I listen to these days. Am and I right? Yeah, I think he's amazing. And, and I, he has way more depth than I appreciated when I was young. I think getting older, I see him in a different light. And I think, and of course, I'm completely madly obsessed with Nita Strauss, his guitar player. So mm. she's just a beast on the guitar. Oh, so, yeah. so just phenomenal. But, um, and I, I've always liked, you know, I don't like Hollywood endings, so that's why I probably like Alice Cooper so much. And I like Meatloaf. I like people that are speaking for the rest of us that got screwed over a lot in life. And, yeah. and so, so he's he's one of my heroes. Um, but getting back to music again, and it was striking me as Ray was talking about it, how music almost is a um, metaphor for life. And we're looking at society. We're looking at each person being a different note, but mm. they have to harmonize, and there's rules, and there's yeah. things that bring order to chaos. And music is wow. kind of really an embodiment of what creates a utopian society. Mm-hmm. The same rules that would make a song beautiful, the same rules make life beautiful and society beautiful if we were to apply them. So maybe I'm off base with that, but it's kind of, it was just something that struck me as you were talking, how there seems to be that metaphoric relationship between the two. Wow. Well, here's here's a uh, another um, I'm gonna way to look back at and it too. Listen to you guys. This oh no, no, this, yeah. no I, I'll, I'll tell you that because what's coming to mind is uh, something we've talked about, uh, uh, Mike, as well is that there's no spiritual tradition that does not include an expression of music, right? In some form, yes. And, and a why is that? There's something about music, uh, and perhaps this is one of the reasons why it is placed just below astronomy and above geometry in that lecture. Right. Is there something about music that unites? I doubt that when Moses was standing in front of the Red Sea, he sang a note to split the Red Sea. It would have gone the opposite direction. A note would have brought the waves to close it again. He had to do so. That's a... I ad hoc joke. Yes, ad hoc yes, joke that's there. good. But, <laughs> but the point is, there's but something about music that that, con- that is a connector. Yes. Uh, because, so, if in, 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 music has the ability to take us from just the point of reason and employ the imagination so that I now have the opportunity to, for a moment, be released in consciousness from the worries and the cares and the specific facts of mortal existence, right? Yeah. You know, I got this bill to pay. I got to go pick up such a so I yeah. got groceries. Yeah. For a moment, we're lifted out of that, you know, and it's just a world of, of, of possibilities and the interplay of harmony and co- or, or of, of dissonance and consonance, consonance and dissonance. Okay. And, and I can see that, and, and that's a wonderful world. Mm-hmm. Would you also say it's being used for just the opposite? It can be. Do you think it's being used today for just the opposite? Because I just feel yeah. that separation, our divide in many respects, maybe it's just the facade that people are pushing off on us mm-hmm. saying that this is divide, so we accept it as divide. Maybe it not really is. Let me tell you something. I, I, I think it can be. I think it can be used that way. Yeah. But music will fight against it. Music will fight against it. Here's, here's what I mean by that. Music can be used to divide people if people allow themselves to identify with, in, in a very narrow way, identify their personalities with music. Right. So I'm a blues fan. What does it mean to say that I'm a blues fan or I'm a rock and roll fan or I'm a country music fan or I'm a whatever? What does it mean? It means that's most of the music I listen to or that I am equal to just that type of music lover. That's an entirely different thing. in harmony with that music. Right. So here's here's what I mean. If there's... um, eh, Anyone can take a song and co-opt it, in a sense. Right. 
you know. So if if I'm if I'm expressing a divisive view, right, right or a divisive idea, yeah. And by divisive, I mean something that 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 is more likely to result in a thought of duality, me versus you, this versus that. If that's my ideology, if that's my way of approaching life, and I co-opt and I take a song on to myself and say, this is this is my song and this is the song of those who like me, right. think like me. Well, that song and that style can be thought of as divisive. I'll give you an example. I grew up in Compton. Compton here in Southern California. Yeah. It was a nice, nice little community. Nice. But for a while, uh, Compton was always thought of as a dangerous place. It was at one point it was called the murder capital of the U.S. Oh, and I was a kid, yeah. Uh, but I was a weird kid. Most people in Compton no. were listening to R and B and soul music, and whatnot. You know, in my house, first of all, um, there wasn't a whole lot of pop music of any kind. I bet. Yeah. So I was listening to a lot of gospel. I was listening to a lot of classical music. What, what, what we call classical music or Western European concert music, put it right. that way. Uh, and then anything else I could hear. So I heard some rock and roll, I heard some pop, I heard some Montevani strings, I heard some country songs, I heard, and there wasn't a whole lot that I absolutely disliked. I loved everything. And then I learned as a child, I I was, I, I believed that as a child that certain styles of music, I thought country music was not for me. Somebody told me that, somebody, this is not, the people who love country music don't love you. And so for years, I had a mental block to country music. All the while, my foot wanted to tap when I heard it. Yeah, of course. And bluegrass especially, man. Oh, yeah. Ooh. I like, it's great music. It's great playing. You see what I mean? So the, the music itself is not divisive. It's what people do with it. When, when, you know, when we try to assign uh, uh, or we think of identification, personality identification with a style. Right. Or an artist or a group or whatever, you know. You know, it's like it's like um, you know the idea, the old silly idea of uh, Beatles versus Rolling Stones. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> what? What's? What's the point? What's yeah. the point? So uh, in the lodge, I, I feel as though you know one of the things I get to do in in ritual, one of the things I get to do with, with music, is we are united under an idea of brotherly love and concern and care. The music that we play can be of any number of styles. I mean, number of different, you know, any key, any tempo. But it's now being identified with something that's egalitarian. Something that's, well, loving. Yes. I And see, I've never told you this, but I think some of the most magical moments during the ritual in your work is when you just do just a few little mm. keys. Yeah. Just that little bitty bridge from one thing to another. Yeah. Very soft, very there, very good. Mm-hmm. And that, that adds so much to bring things together, as yeah. you were talking about, to bring that along. Well, you know, the magic flute was a huge thing. It's a base, basically a masonry, am I right? Yes, it is. Now, this is a, this is a new bit for me. I did not know... Uh, that my favorite composer when I was in college, uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, was a mason. And he composed music specifically for, for us. So that's one of the next purchases I get to make is some uh, new Mozart music because I just want to pull it apart. If nothing else, then to isolate some of the themes. Because, I know. you know, the yeah. elaboration of, of, of 18th century music, can, it can sometimes seem a little bit much for us stylistically. Right. Uh, modern ears, but if I can isolate a few of his themes, and I can modernize a few things, I, there's there's plenty oh, of stuff that from Mozart that's, that's you gonna... know, There's so much there. Yeah, so much there, brother Michael. I know you're a huge fan of this. Why don't you bring in your words on this? Well, yeah. I mean, I think first of all, I mean, who doesn't like Mozart? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Something wrong with you if you don't. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think, and of course, you know, keep in mind too, it's not just Mozart that there's been mm -hmm. a significant number of composers. Beethoven, I think, uh, amazing. Sibelius and, also. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so yes. it's been a big influence on our world as a whole. But um, something that again struck me while I was listening to you guys talk, and and we look at the seven liberal arts and sciences, 
and the two that were most elevated at the top of the staircase, music and astronomy. Now, the interesting thing is the ones that are at the bottom, you know, grammar, rhetoric, logic, arithmetic, geometry, are, are non-creative, non-imaginative things. They're, they're, they're the skill sets. But without those skill sets, you can't use your imagination, That's apparently. Right. You can't reach it. And so the idea of, of ascending from sort of this, this non-creative, non-imaginative sort of being into a purely imaginative, you know, awe-inspired kind of a being. But again, without the, without the underlying structure, without that, that rational mind that you're not going to be able to develop the, the creative soul. And I think that that's a fascinating concept. Absolutely. So maybe Ray can elaborate on that a little bit too. Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> 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 what that reminds me of that just, uh, just a little bit is, is the uh, um, Kabbalistic tree of life. Right. And uh, if I had an illustration of it, that'd be really handy. But one of the things of those who are familiar with the tree of life, realizing it's uh, um, a diagram, you could say it's a diagram, but a glyph representing the universe and the right. pro progression of the universe or the creation of the universe. Right. Um, and I say Kabbalistic uh, uh, tree of life um, because the particular um, studies that I'm involved in have more to do with that particular way of interpreting it as opposed to the, or I should say the hermetic right. tree of life as opposed sure. to the Jewish Kabbalah, which is a slightly different study. Sure. But the idea that um, at the bottom of the tree is the center or the sephirot known as Malkut or the kingdom represents the physical world, the manifest, everything that is shown up in form. Right. Or the, its opposite, the very top, Keter, is the crown, and that is the unexpressed everything. Everything before it is has started a process of, of involution. Yeah. And therefore, music, if you were to place in those those um, liberal arts, you would find music towards the top of that, as opposed to oh, something so. in yeah. form. Oh, yeah. And that's why music is such um, a fascinating subject, because it has form, yet it doesn't. We say, we, you, you know, you buy music. You say you buy music. How do you? How do you well, do what that? do you have? You can't put it in your hand. So, wow. So music has a lot to do with masonry, it doesn't it? And it parallels so much to it. Do you have any final words, Brother Michael? No, I think, I mean, I want to leave it with Ray because he's the guy that I think is just fascinating tonight to listen to. So I'm going to sure. leave the final words up to Ray. Oh, there final words. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the, here's the thing that I it would say. He returns this remaining time to you. Uh, that's you wonderful. The, the music, the, the, the other wonderful thing about music, I believe, is that it's, it's fully accessible by every person. Yes. Not just musicians, not just those supposedly trained in music. And, and the training is wonderful. I get to be one of those who helps to create and guide a piece of music, yet it would be, uh, it wouldn't make any sense if every person didn't have the ability to absorb, understand, and give back to it. So, I know, totally. if, if, yeah, if nothing else, sing something every day. Sing something beautiful every day. L take some time to listen to something wonderful, something that lifts you up. Not just that helps you vent your anger, yes. but also gives you a good feeling. Yes. Oh, yeah. I will never forget when I first started playing my saxophone and mm. we did our first concert. Mm -hmm. It was amazing because <laughs> I felt that I was not playing something. I was communicating yeah, something. Yeah, because that's what it is. That's totally what it yeah. is. I'm, I'm bringing something. It's some, you know, I've got an instrument in my hand and I... Even if I can only play five notes, yeah, that's not they're the not point. existing in time and space until they actually come through me and then through my instrument. Awesome. Brother Ray, <laughs> it <laughs> is so good to see you. Let's do it both ways. Yeah, though. yeah, brother. All right. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. do it again. <laughs> Pow. There you go. <laughs> this has been the program Illumination from the Library of Sunset Lodge, number 369. Way too short today, man. I know, man. It like ah, who knows? Reach us by email at uh, sunsetmasoniclodge369 at gmail.com. Till next time, we'll see you then.